Welcome to Magic the Flavoring, the Magic the Gathering podcast, where we talk about all things magic, flavor, design, and lore. I'm your host, Andy Mann. Oi, oi, you horrible lot. It's Nathan Cancel. Oh, I didn't like that. Yeah, I didn't think you would. Oh. I, all, all, do you know what's funny? Like, I spent most of last night and this morning like, thinking, do I do a different, a different intro? And up until literally 10 seconds ago, I had a good one, and then I forgot it. I went, fuck it, let's go with whatever comes into your head. Oh, well, don't do that ever well, again. I'm not gonna. Please. I'm not gonna. Do we happy, start, are we happy, starting again? Happy birthday to happy me. Happy birthday, darling. That makes no sense to anyone else because this isn't going to be released on the day of your birth. No, but they will know it was recorded on the day of my birth. But they won't know what day that was. September the 12th. Okay, now now they will. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As I said in the last episode, I did indeed buy myself a box of Magic the Gathering cards Mm. from the set All Wilds of Eldraine. What a shill. You actually spend money on this? Ugh, you don't just proxy everything? I bought... Wizards product at MSRP from a shop selling Magic the Gathering cards. There is no MSRP. Yeah, well, that's that's the whole, the whole point. There nah, isn't. We do, yeah, we do. Amazon yeah, fucking everything we, up. We know that. We know that. Anyway, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty spicy box. It was actually. Yeah, you got you got some good stuff. You got some, you got a bit of blossom. I got a bit of blossom, like the 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 what do they call them? The fairy tales. Enchanted tales. Enchanted tales. Thank you. Mm. I got land tax. Parallel lives. Mm. Uh, I got a beseech the mirror. Beseech the mirror was my first. Uh, pack that I opened and then Parallel Eyes was the last one that's nice. pretty good book ending it I like yeah. it yeah awesome. I think I put a picture up on Twitter so yeah I am very happy with this set I was, I'm, so I'm not a big gambler right if we're playing for things like money mm. I think I went to a casino once with our mutual friend AJ we mm. went down to Southampton mm. and I played some poker and I got the second best hand in the poker tournament and I lost yeah, well, do you know what I mean? Like, you, you don't just win with the good cards. You gotta, you gotta play the game one. As well, well, yeah. Uh, and then I played roulette for like. I mean, we're talking like this is over a decade ago. And then we played roulette until like the wee hours. And I was like, cool, I've lost all my money. And so I don't like. And I, I find that buying cards on mass in like a box form mm. is a similar thing. Bundles, I'm not actually as. I don't know why bundles are so be- much better to me. I think it's because Probably they're... the cost. Like, they cost a little feel, less. It doesn't feel like you're you're relying... Because if you buy a full box, you're kind of relying on the box to give you some good stuff. Otherwise, you've kind of wasted yeah. your money because you could have spent that money on all the singles you wanted from the set. Exactly. In theory. Whereas I think the bundle is got, what, it's like eight set boosters now. Or it used mm. to be ten. And then it gives you the dice and the box is cool and there's like usually a little lore insert and mm. it gives you foil lands and a promo card. So I feel like... The and it's bun- almost... It feels better for the... When, you, when a new set comes out to get a bundle, it's like the... Oh, well... I might as well get something with the these new set are, coming These out. are the cards from the set that I can play with and I'll get singles. Yeah, exactly, whereas a box, yeah. you're thinking, it's almost like you're trying to get the set. Yeah, you want the value. Yeah. 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 So, But I, I lucked out this time. I think the last time I bought a box was Theros Beyond Death, and I don't think it was a particularly amazing box. But the promo was the um, Erebos, the... Bleak Hearted. No, not the Erebos, sorry. And you're right, the Bleak Hearted is the card from that set. It was the Athreos Shroud. Shroud Veiled. Failed. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's just a cool card. Anyway. Yeah, the Biobox promo. Yeah. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've got a pretty good. Check out the... What's, what's the Biobox for... What was the Biobox for this? Was there oh, one? I gave you one, didn't I? Because I managed to get two of them, like, off someone else. Um, but, oh, did you get the the, the, the woman? The, the No. Oh, okay. It was the, <laughs> it's it, the woman. It's, it's white... <laughs> It has a circular design. Oh, the uh, the uh, not the throne card, no. No, I don't think it was virtue either. Mm. Well, good, great. clearly, clearly Amazing. it was a, clearly it was a good promo. <laughs> uh, the rest of it was great. Oh, yeah, I also got like the red and green virtues as well. Mm. Virtues are cool. Yeah, which are pretty spice. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy with it. Real happy with it, in fact. Um, on a slightly somber note, I think everyone's probably seen the news by now mm. that uh, Sheldon Menery has sadly passed away this past week. He was on the rules committee. He was considered the godfather of the commander format, and he's one of the most revered judges in all of Magic: The Gathering, Wizard: mm. The Coast. Um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Sheldon uh, on, I think it was episode like one hundred five, one hundred six. I could be slightly wrong. It was the one where we did our new Capenna flavor picks. Mm. When I was and, in Mexico, uh, yes, when you were in Mexico. Uh, so yeah, it's very sad. I did. I I felt very very sad when I heard the news, and I'm sure everyone did. But yeah, mm. if you're playing Commander this week, raise glass to Sheldon. And, uh, yeah, here's to you, Sheldon. I couldn't do it without you. Um, right, let's talk about something silly. Mm. This set is super silly. Bit wackadoodle. 
And I'm absolutely here for it. Absolutely. As the person who does not like unsets and thinks that they're like, oh, they're just wizards trying to be funny for the sake of being funny. This is an unset. Yeah. Like, where I feel like, you see, this is how you do it. You don't make some kind of throwaway theme, like, oh, space, like, carnival, whatever the fuck, and then do some silly jokes that are borderline, <laughs> like, offensive to people. No, you make a set with a solid theme, an actual, like, you know, you, you take, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, conviction in the mm. thing that you're trying to do, but you can also make the thing that you're doing objectively silly there are candy zombies in this fucking thing this feels very adventure time to me this set and I'm oh, a massive true. adventure true yeah time. candy kingdom had, yeah, yeah, had yeah. made that parallel yeah. this feels very adventure time and I'm absolutely here it's for it it's tongue in cheek it's a bit twee there's lots of puns I've, I've actually got a section of just puns some of them better than others. Um, yeah, I mean, oh. this, this deck... Well, you know, a, a great. Of, a bottle of fizzy drink was probably not... Yeah, not right in the middle of the first <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Just, just hush me. Um, good. Um, yeah, there's lots of um, lots of humour in this set. Um, and I, th- I don't think this is a set that's trying to take itself too seriously. Um, I don't know that the last Hell Dream particularly took itself very seriously, but this one really leans into no. the, into the, the, the twee fey, it's just very light-hearted kind of feel. You, yeah, so I feel, this is how I felt about it, is that the first Hell Drain, they're obviously trying to hit a lot of those fairy tale tropes, but they weren't quite sure how far they could push it. And also, I don't think, I don't think they really, because it's the first set to a new plane, they only got one set, and they were focused on bringing new planeswalkers, having the novel, doing this wild realms thing. I think they were still trying to find the feet of what Eldraine really was. Mm. And whilst they haven't got rid of the knights theme, because the knights are still around and they're still sort of like, the realms are still characters in themselves. They have, as we mentioned in the last episode, cut way back mm. on the Arthurian legend stuff. Still have some of it here, but yeah. they've leaned more heavily into the fairy tale thing. And also they've had the confidence to be like, these are the fairy tales in Magic the Gathering world, right? As opposed to going oh. Magic the Gathering forced into the into the, the cutout of a of a fairy tale. Yeah, whereas last time I think they were going and this I remember when we listened back to the last episode, you and I in our own time, uh, the last episode being the first episode we ever did on LJ, not the last episode. Um, we mentioned how it was a good thing that that what I did anyway, I was very up on the whole thing of like they haven't called it like, you know, Hansel and Gretel and all this kind of stuff. Mm. This time they have actually gone closer to that with cards like Greta and all that kind of thing. But I feel like, again, because they've gone like they've they've ramped it up even further into being a magic the gathering telling of the fairy tales, not just the fairy tales on a magic card. Mm. You know, this isn't a secret layer of Disney's greatest fairy tale hits. No, but please don't give them ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess like, the main point that we said in the last one, and I think I was in much greater defence of it that I, I think I realised um, looking back, is that they balanced the knights and the wilds quite well. Yes. Um, and this was off the back of, I think it was, we've just come back off of Dominaria, like the knight's swing was actually quite in, in quite full effect. And I guess we kind of have had that enough again recently, weird enough, back being on Dominaria again, that it doesn't feel weird to have that bit fall away because I don't know how much more, and I was saying this at the time, I don't know how much more knight stuff you can do before it just starts feeling like generic dudes on, on horses and yeah. duets on horses and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I feel like they probably realised, went, okay, well, we did that. And it made a nice balance because then you didn't have too much of one, too much of the other. And that was one of the main benefits of of the first time of hitting Eldrain of where they wanted to hit both notes simultaneously. And this one they can kind of pull back on the on the court side of things because they did it, it kind of gave Eldrain its identity. Now Eldrain has that identity of the five courts. Well what else do we want to lean in? And yeah, as you say, like they've lent into that the I feel like they had to go balls deep on the on on the fairy tale aspect and the grim fairy tales and all on, on all the um it's not just grim actually, there's a few other references that I think are quite cool that are in the set that we didn't see the last time. I think there's a fair few rep- repetitions. Um, listening back to my flavor picks that we snuck in at the end of our full flavor episode, like we, like, yeah, we yeah, listening yeah. back, it's wild. We, we did, did a little the story bit of both. and the cards, yeah, yeah. which is b- bonkers. Um, what, what what were we worried about? We're a flavor podcast. Do we think we'd run out of airtime? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what obviously, were we doing? I think we learned over the years that we need to split it because our flavor picks ended up being as important and chunky as the story is. And there's a lot to say about actually the um, dissonance between the story and the set for for for, the, for this set a lot, mm-hmm. but more a lot more than the last one. But of the five flavor picks I had, two of them have representation in this set again. So maybe they actually ran out of fairy tales, and that's something I want to talk about. Yeah, a little bit. or I mean, yeah. Potentially, we'll talk about it because yeah. I, I think my attitude. I think weirdly, I've done a real one eighty on a lot of my previously held sort of like magic canon can't do this. Don't have fun. It's got to be grim dark all the time. And now, actually, I think I've one eighty and like I don't know. 
I was so I'll be honest with you, and I think I've hinted like this on the podcast as well, and we've definitely spoken about it just us as magic playing friends. I have become a little bit uh not disillusioned. I'm having a tough time expressing myself today. I sort of hit a rut with like deck building and like because like all good Vorthos and like I think a lot of people who play Magic, it's not just about like the text box for me. Obviously, I want a commander card or an individual card to really spark like a this is an idea I've got and like mm-hmm. really follow it through. And then obviously you cut all the fancy stuff for the staples because you want to play Magic. But that initial spark of idea is like something you want to jump to. And I'd had a couple of things like. Catilda and Lier for like I'd had like a sort of Wicker Man sort of style druids deck I wanted to build and uh, flim flam and I I was like I really hope Wilds of Eldraine reinvigorates my passion for like deck building and magic and flavour and fuck me has it and I think it's because it is doing cool things whilst not taking itself too seriously Mm. and I you know previously I've been like no I I want my fantasy sort of take itself a bit seriously whereas actually I think this one gets away when it doesn't so I don't know I don't know man it's it's lit a fire under my butt. Let's yeah, just say that. Fair. I mean, there might also just be something to said for the. It's nice going back to planes that have that unex like you um, unexplored um, or also struggling to express myself um, that have the opportunity to explore um, aspects of the plane that you haven't seen before. Like when we go back to Dominary, it's not like oh let's explore Dominary. It's like what is happening on Dominary this time that needs there to be another set on there. Yeah. Same kind of thing with Zendikar. Like okay, there were Skyclaves kind of cool for a little bit but what's the reason for us being back on this plane that we already know about doing things like Eldraine and Ixalan it's like cool we've got the one continent we've got the one focus on the story can we now expand it like if we went back to Strixhaven it would be great not to just be focused on the school for example yeah yeah 100%. and I think this set does a really good a really good um, uh, effort in just expanding what we already knew of Eldraine and then pushing it out into into areas that you know like they make it feel more cohesive it feels more expansive it feels more than just just what what we've seen the last time which is was good it's it's a part two and a good part two yeah instead of it feeling like a rerun yeah uh this set is also just packed with awesome artwork like i not that i think the past few sets have looked bad but there was definitely a period of magic where the where magic was really firing all cylinders and i think maybe we'd gotten used to it looking a certain way so i think you know around the time of kaldheim uh, like magic was looking incredibly pretty. Every set was just like had a real sort of all in flavor. And I wonder if it's because we've seen we've had this Phyrexian arc of everything needing to look like it's part of the same world. Indeed, the Phyrexian Phyrexian world. That although it looks beautiful and all this kind of stuff, maybe I'd just gotten a bit used to it. Mm. So to have Eldraine come back and like some of the some of the newer artists as well at least artists that I don't fully recognize where I'm like fuck me that is just a beautiful card is just you know true well, we did do the year of Phyrexia, right we did say that we're doing a year of Phyrexia. if you're in for that art style then strap in because it's going to be here for a while yeah, and yeah. as much as we got a little hint of other planes in aftermath this is our first like you know uh, breather as it were from from the from the the grim dark well not grim dark but the body horror kind of aspects of, of Phyrexia. we actually get some horrific artwork in here as well, yeah, but yeah. it feels very much like it's, it's your Saturday morning television rather than your late night fucking horror film. Well, that's the, that's because a lot of the what you would probably potentially call the most horrifying artwork is also based in and around candy cane people. True. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think one of the biggest the biggest issue I have with this uh, set is dumb. that I really want to play all of the cards. Like, I really like a lot of what this set's doing on a micro level, like a like. Uh, we'll talk about some of the like, mechanical aspects as well because we, we've actually got a set that's got some new mechanics we can kind of talk about, which we haven't done in a while. Um, but I would like to be playing the limited because I don't think otherwise I'm going to see a lot of these cards and have a chance to play these cards much because playing Commander kind of limits your the power. You know, you've got to either be playing Pauper EDH, specifically playing a certain um, with a certain limitation, or specifically leaning into flavor on like 100% Vorthos because a lot of these cards just aren't strong enough to be playable in Commander. Mm. Which is a shame because a lot of these cards are really interesting. I'd like to see them play, but it just doesn't work for the format that I typically do so in. So I think that's the greatest shame I'm going to have from this set is there's so many cards that I look at and go, man, I'd love to have a chance to cast this, but when am I ever going to? Yeah. Which is actually a real mark for the set, not against it. Mm. Should we get into some to some actual flavor? Should I start, mean, should we there start was... licking? There... Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> what? I I've got too much to talk about, so I'm happy for you to lead lead okay. the categories. God, I've got so I've got a few random like again. So we, 
we this is a, we're a long way from the five top five flavor picks, and then we bounce between each other. And oh, how how to, how can we? Yeah, how can we? I just I now just have themes and stuff where I just chuck a bunch of cards in. Sometimes with single single little bits behind it. Um, so first and foremost, um, where the fuck was Sweet Tooth in the story? The village of Sweet Tooth. Yeah, Tooth. because there are some massive, massive themes in this. And I've got it weirdly enough listed as misses. And I don't know why I've listed it as misses, because I think on in retrospect, that's not exactly what I mean. But I've got two big ones. And one of them is Sweet Tooth in general. We never see it in the story, so its presence in set feels odd. As I enjoy Gingerbread House thematic pushed, and pushed into a nightmare before Christmas level. But yes. you don't actually get to experience it outside of the cards. So you don't actually get to see... like Imagine the POV of someone who's being chased by the fucking... The, the what, what's the what's the what was my moment the, the the horrible fucking thing the donut thing the devouring sugarmore yeah oh god oh yeah, god there's a there's a few cards here so you got devouring sugarmore is you're right is a so I said uh, candy zombies earlier these are technically horrors yes which I think thematically is actually very accurate mm-hmm. I'm a little bit sad that they didn't put food on a lot of these things as a subtype. Well, because food isn't a creature type, is it? And but it's it is, an artifact. Well, it's yeah. an artifact. No, because we did this. We did do this. We did this last time, the and only you shot me down <laughs> immediately. <laughs> right, so yeah, we've got Devouring... I have a point here. Uh, we've got <laughs> Devouring Dreadmore is one of them. Uh, Minstrosity, which is a candy cane abomination. Uh, if the sugary abominations of Sweet Tooth Village were under someone's control, that time has long passed. Um, we also have... Oh, see, yeah, I should have rearranged my card gallery a bit better. Oh, yeah. Uh, Scream Puff is another one, which is like this giant, like, horrible cream puff thing. So, yeah, we've got all these, like, horrors that are candy cane people. Now, my point is, is because the card Greta... Uh, Greta Sweet Scourge, Scourge yeah. which is one green black for a human warrior 3 3. Uh, it's the uncommon sort of legendary signifier. Uh, when Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge enters the battlefield, create a food token. Tap for a green, sacrifice a food token, put a 1 1 counter on target creature, activate it as a sorcery. 1 on a black, sacrifice a food, you draw a card and lose one life. So Greta is like got a vendetta against the candy abominations. Greta with the vendetta. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice, nice, like nice. It. Nice. <laughs> so it would have been thematically nice. You could have built a commander deck from a commander perspective mm. around Greta being the commander. If all the horrors were also food people, because it's like she's killing the food stuff Agreed. to get her value. Yeah. Right. So that's that's my long winded point. Well, I mean, didn't also, do that. <laughs> where the hell's Ansel? We don't need Hansel. Where's Ansel? Where's the 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 boy who's chasing the like? Because I like the idea that she's a scourge and like she's fighting. So instead of the sweets eating her, which would be a, a reversal, is that she's then beating the sweets which is a reversal on a reversal yeah yeah and I think it would be nice to maybe play on Ansel's like like uh, the horror to the horrors of where he's like um, like super obese like super dumb, like trying to eat all of them and it's almost oh. like and, and, and they flee from him you know because the idea is he's such a he's so indulgent you know and he's so excessively um, you know like gluttonous that they can't escape his more like that would have been quite cool to see I yeah, don't know, I, I, it would have also like it that. would have also fit in with the saga because the saga Welcome to Sweet Tooth shows Ansel on it's a cake right with the layers of a cake tears mm-hmm. of a cake very good very clever very like it uh, the first tier is create a one one uh, white human creature token the second is create a food and then the third is put X one one counters on target creature control where X is one plus the number of foods you control yeah. so it literally could have been Ansel getting bigger the more food right he eats. exactly I know and it feels so a bit like of a miss, it but... misses it a little bit but and then there's also cars like Sugar Rush yeah Sugar so Rush is scary good. as fuck man so this is uh oh sorry Brent Hollow Hollow Hill. Hollow, yes. yes, Brent Hollow Hill. Hollowell, sorry. Um, really cool. I don't know why it invokes Maze Runner to me, but instead of being these weird zombie metallic things, it's like the candy canes are sharpened to points as it claws around the wall. Yeah. That's freaky as fuck, man. And then the other one that I really like, and I had this uh, down as, uh, as a separate pick anyway, um, is... Oh, no, I've scrolled too far. Um, candy Grapple. <laughs> now, I like the idea that they're called grapples instead of apples because they've yeah. got like claws and stuff and everything like that. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, one of the black for an instant. Bargain. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. If the spell was bargained, which means if you sacrifice an artifact, an enchantment, or a token, it gets minus five, minus five instead. Flavor text. What, don't you mean poisonous? There's no such thing as a venomous... Ah! That is, <laughs> it's, a, that is, an, inc- is an incredibly clever joke. It's peak. And I'm very annoyed 
Because it, do you know why I'm annoyed at it? Because it makes me think, yeah, I bet no one else is going to get that. But it's actually not that clever. No, it's but it not is that very clever. clever. At all. No, um, but there is a, so clever. There's oh. another one, Knight of Sweets Revenge, which is three and a green for an enchantment. Mm. When Knight of Sweets Revenge enters the battlefield, uh, create a food token. Foods you control have tap for a green. So again, that would have been a nice sort of thing with the golems. Also, quick point: foods. Foods. Shouldn't just be food. One food, two food. No, because it would be like tokens you control. Yeah, but. It doesn't make sense. Is it one? Sh- like, is it sheep's? Isn't the plural of sheep sheep, and the plural of food is food? So it should just be food. But it, uh, if, you, just be if food, you say to someone, look at all this food. Should it just be you food have. creatures? Yeah, food I creatures guess. You- anyway, it's all right. uh, and then well, no, because it doesn't necessarily have to be creatures. It could be food. <laughs> yeah, but then at that point, because I guess that ugh, food permanence. Five colorless, two green. <laughs> I, you're right. I don't. I don't want to get into it. Uh, sacrifice knight of suits revenge. Creatures you control get plus X plus S in turn with the X number of foods you control. Um, activate only as a sorcery. So it's just yeah. I mean, it's a whole thing. I mean, they're playing. Uh, they're horrors. I did say zombies. Then correct myself. Mm-hmm. They're definitely meant to be zombies, right? It's night of the living dead. It's exactly yeah. that. Yeah. And this again, this just feels like nightmare on um, nightmare before Christmas. It does but, a bit. Yeah. But, yeah. but again, they kind of played into the candy aspect when they saw it would have been it's Easter instead of uh, Christmas, right? It's like if if. Jack Skeleton tried to take over Easter. Yes, and and there, is, there is an Easter door in that film, right? And there should have been an Easter bunny, I reckon. At that point, I don't know. It, 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 maybe we're going to. There should have been a whole set of this. Is, uh, I think what we're going to because we never get to see this in the story. We never get anything but the cards. And thank God they did enough of the cards for it to feel super fleshed out. Yeah, but it feels super fleshed out without any narrative backup. Yeah. Similarly, my point two in Under Misses is the mice and the rat focus. It's a yeah. massive, massive, massive part Huge. of the set. Huge. And it brings it really down to being more grounded compared to the, the, the sweet zombies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's much more realistic to have like all these mice and all these rats and everything going around. And also rabbits as well. Like, is this just um rodent plane now? I realize. Well, do you know what? Because they they I could I can't remember what they've called it. There's the Red Wall inspired magic mm. plane that they're bringing out in a couple of and years. And that to me, that looked like it was going to be the Eldraine artwork with yeah. the because it was knights and a mi- and a mouse. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's what Eldraine is at the moment. It's just knights and mice. Yeah. But again, it like it was a massive, massive thing. Like, do we need to have cheeky house mouse and raging battle mouse in the same set? So cheeky battle mouse. No, Some... no, 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 no. Raging battle mouse Sorry, and cheeky, cheeky house, house mouse. mouse. Some of the names in this set. I don't quite know how they thought they could get away with them. Cheeky? Yeah. We can't have a magic card in a yeah. mainline oh, set. Oh, it's a cheeky little house yeah, mouse. Uh, I don't know about that. And I think, obviously, the flavour text, I think it's, Oi, get back here. I was just about finished cursing that ring. And, like, for some reason, things like that, as much as I think is a little bit tweed, I'm a little bit like, oh, come on. I'm like, that feels realistic. Yeah. It's like when sometimes, like, I'll watch um, the difference between Ahsoka and Andor in terms of, like, right, the yeah. way people talk to each other in Ahsoka is just not how people talk. Whereas in Andor, they're actually having normal conversation. I'm like, oh, okay, as an actor, it'd be way easier to do that versus, say, like, the Legolas in every one of the Lord of the Rings sure. films. Every line is read, like, in a declamatory style as if he's doing a one-liner, you know? And, and I don't like that. He's an elf. Yeah, but not all of the elves sound like that all the time. Yeah, but... Elrond can actually sound like he's talking Do you talking reckon the other elves think like, oh, shut the fuck, fuck up, up Legolas. Legolas, shut up. Oh, oh, friend to the dwarves, oh, look at you. <laughs> How about you say something to Frodo? He's the fucking ring bearer. It was an outreach program, you dolt. None of us had to go on that because we weren't so fucking dull. Anyway, uh, the segue. But yeah, I feel like it, it, it's weird because it grounds the set a lot. Like, it's the bit... Like, there's also the card, the dog card, where... Uh, let me just grab it quickly. There are many dog Edgewall, cards. Edgewall Pack. Oh, yes. Three and a red for a creature dog. Doesn't really matter what it does. The thing I like about it is the mayor sent hounds to root out Lord Skitter, but their loyalty was easily bought with a handful of bones. Like, there's there's inner politics between the dogs and the rats. Yeah. And, and we don't see any of that in any of the narrative. Yeah. And it's another thing where I'm like, it's huge. There's loads of... like You, you get the flute... You get the song, you have multiple pipers, you've got a card called Rat Out where someone's literally throwing a rat at somebody. Yeah. You've got Old Lord Flitter S- Flang, who's you've- a rat fairy. That's not okay, by the <laughs> way. I've literally just put why <laughs> in my notes. Why does that need to be a thing? I don't understand things that have wings, but the membrane's gone, because then the wings don't work anymore. Yeah. So it can't have... So th- Does it have flying? Does it have flying, the stupid rat fairy? Uh, it does. Th- how could it flap? How can, how can he flap? Well, he's got little sinews. I mean, I know it's the how them. does she how can she slap me, but how how can she flap? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the rat thing is interesting because yeah, you're right. You've even got a legendary piper in Tonton Tans. <laughs> Tonton Tans, yeah, that is his name. Swan Piper, the human warlock bard. Who's yeah, the, the red black sing- the ragdoll sing- yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you've got obviously Lord Skitterfang, and like as you say, you've got a whole bunch of these rats. And there is like there's even you know when it's an intended storyline when you have sick cards that are like the sorcery spells to the 
it's like the Oathbreaker thing, right? Where everyone's got their signature, signature spell. spell. Yeah, exactly. So, like, Lord schizophrenia has got a signature spell where he's bestowing the power of the pipe on the piper and all this kind of stuff. And you think that's just yet another story which we don't ever explore in the no. main line. Is um, it, I mean, is it a mark for the set that it's actually... Because there are times before where we don't get... We get sets like, say, I don't know, like Dominaria, where the the story comes from the narrative and it's just, just throw a load of random cards that fit into, into the plane. Whereas sure. this is doing... Something actually that most sets typically don't do, where they go, well, "We're not going to give you the story in narrative form. We're going to give you the story give you multiple cards on this card." Yeah, now, we're actually I gonna agree. Give... I actually think you're right because it's what are we saying here? Are we saying that we would want to see more of it in the story to explore these cards, or are the cards enough of a story delivery system? And I actually kind of think it is. It's the second left is the latter. Yeah. Um... The problem is <laughs> here's the problem with magic. Now here's the problem with the storyline that we got, and we expressed it ad nauseum in our last episode. They gave us five story. They gave us five episodes for two stories. One of which was boring and don't care. The Will and Rowan. Yeah. And the other one was interesting, but actually nowhere near as interesting as the like. There's like five of them. There's like four or five other fairy tales going on yeah. in the set that would have been way better as an A story. Mm-hmm. Like, like Godric. Godric, the the, the dragon dude. Um, you could have done the Cinderella story with that. You could have had the you could have had the whole well, Ash no, crashing. So Ash, Ash is at that party. Yeah. So the but that we don't get to see no. that from a from an Ash point of view and a Godric point of view, and yeah. then and then all the reds, what they're called, the, the red caps, red caps come in. So and they yeah. Raid the party. So this one is um, the storyline of Ash uh, party crasher who's our sort of Cinderella analogue, but they've turned her into a knight, which is cool. Uh, well, she's a peasant in knight's gear. Yeah, she's not, a de- she's not that damsel figure. She's no, she's more... pretending to be like a warrior, Yeah, right? she's a rambunctious little scamp who's coming in and fucking shit up instead of being doting on the prince. Yeah, exactly. And then the prince is uh, Godric, uh, Godric Cloaked Reveller, who is a dragon in the disguise of a prince. I mean, he's got like gold skin and dragon eyes. I don't know how people didn't spot it. but yeah. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's loads of cards. You've got Dispel the Interlopers. Food Fight is another one. Uh, yeah, there's a big food thing, isn't Because there's a, the skewer, there's the Elemental who's a, essentially a, a pitchfork or something, isn't she? What's her name? What's, she's a Rotisserie Elemental. Yes. You've got a Rotisserie Elemental, Food Fight, and then there's another common card as well, further down. Do, 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 do. Where are we? Oh, God. Skewer Slinger. Yeah. And it's, again, it's just part of the food fight, but in then on the card. And again, it's just showing multiple aspects of the same, like, 20 minutes of, yeah, of yeah, a story. Yeah. But you get to get the full scope of it. Yeah, a bunch of red caps break into Godric's uh, ball. There's all these different characters that are at the ball. It's like you're seeing, yeah, the same story from all these different perspectives. Godric's a fucking dragon. Mm. Like, that's that's a wild fairy tale that you could have told from Ash's perspective, right? Mm. Or whatever. Well, didn't they actually? Now I'm thinking about it. Wasn't each colour pair supposed to be its own fairy tale? Now I think about it. Oh, maybe it's all of them. They consolidated way more. Is it Johan who's the red, red, white? uh, First, the first one of the flavour picks that I went into depth when they had multiple cards in the last Eldraine set, and they went. We're just going to pretend that no one noticed, and we're actually going to do it for realsies this time because it's the red blue one. You know, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You get Johan. You get Frantic Fireball. You get Johan's Stopgap. You get the um, the the Saga as well. The the one that makes reflections. Um, so again, they did this whole. Well, we did it a little bit in the last set, but let's just make that the whole of the red blue thing this set. But again, maybe that's kind of nice. I'm not against it. Yeah. It's just funny that they and they did it twice. They did it with that, and they did it with the Clackbridge Troll. Yes, because they did. This is one. Of, this is one I'm actually annoyed about. They did the gruff triplets, so they did the three Billy Groats gruff. Yes. I was like, did we really need this reference again? And I was like, did people just not get the clack back troll reference from the last set? Because there's also graceful takedown and fawnsbane troll. Like, <laughs> so we had the troll and that made the goats, but you said, oh, let's also make the goats and then also make another troll and then show them battling each other. Yeah. Which again, it feels, and, and, and it's in the colours of the sweet tooth, you know, the Golgari colours. So it's not even like that's the focus for that story. They just decided to do it again, but yeah. better. And I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it again, but better. But I feel like there's very limited um, retail on that. Like I feel like you can't do that too much before I'm just like, okay, you do only have six or seven stories you can tell here, right? I've just gone back over my uh, my flavour picks screenshots that I took. And yeah, so I said Lord Skitter Fang. It's not, it's just called Lord Skitter. And one of the cards is Lord Skitter's Butcher. Who's a little chef rat? That's a rat peasant. Yeah. Why does it suggesting have... there's a hierarchy within? But also, the... you're a peasant, but a chef. Like, surely at that point, you can't be a peasant if you're a cook, right? Like, surely being a cook's pretty high up in a... in terms of rat culture. Being a chef has got to be pretty, pretty, pretty good, good, right? Yeah. And also, imagine so the lord of rats. I mean, it's like, oh, the, the peasants. The thing that suggests a hierarchy when there's literally a lord skitter. Um, imagine being considered a rat peasant. 
That's got to be a kick. Yeah, in the right. Teeth. Like, because there's lots of rat. So, as a rat peasant, are you higher than the rats that don't have a class? Uh, or a, 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 a rat's typical rat's just n- normal because you've got voracious vermin who doesn't clearly have a job it's clearly just out on the streets yes yeah, I'm sentient enough that I have a class and the class happens to be the worst one <laughs> yeah exactly like what the fuck and then also yeah. who made the little hat who gave him the like, little, chef's little, little chef's hat yeah. obviously it just does it's, it's Remy but not Remy I don't know I mean, it's cu- again I like it because it's not surface level there's just a little bit of it There's the more you look into it the more there is but there is, and, and I feel like maybe the, the, Lord, uh, the Lord Skitter side isn't so much because it's pretty easy to create the narrative of that. What the fuck is going on with all these werefoxes? That's, yeah, so you have, uh, like, Bestial Bloodline, Curse the Werefox. Besotted Knight. Besotted Knight, which is like a Beauty and the Beast type. You are no monster to me, my love. We did this card! Smitten fucking Beast or whatever it was called. Love struck Beast. That made a 1-1. One, one. Oh, it's, we've done this exact card before, anyway. So, yeah, so the, I, I actually, I mean, again, this is another one of those narratives. Yeah, lots of werefoxes going on. Because foxes in the last and set. And where is the narrative backing it up? A... I, the thing is, I don't necessarily know if they need a narrative for werefoxes if they just be like, look, werefoxes are a thing on this plane. The problem I have with werefoxes, narratively speaking, and again, this is because they've expanded and this is the second time round. This is the only only the second set. It's not even the second like block or whatever. They've mm. only had two sets worth. True. Is yeah. that in the last set, foxes were very much the the sort of steeds of a lot of the elf folk Mm -hmm. so you did have giant foxes that they could ride i forgot about that yeah Yeah. so they've obviously taken that aesthetic and gone like well what can we do differently they do have a couple of fox riders but what if there are werefoxes because on innistrad for example there are wolves and werewolves Mm. so it kind of makes sense and there are wolves and because the witch stalkers obviously uh, because wolves are kind of known as witch stalkers in this set naturally in eldraine naturally anyway it's quite cool that their version of because they could have been a fox werewolf, right? They could have named them fox werewolf. Well, I'm a bit see... disappointed they didn't. Yeah, because it's kind of annoying to see an elf fox warrior, and I'm like, as a, as a, as a... it's literally a were... it's literally a lycanthrope. Like, yeah, so yeah. as a, as a as a creature t- typing like that doesn't actually evoke what is happening from. If I saw elf fox warrior, I wouldn't for some I wouldn't immediately think werefox. And maybe is it actually that werefoxes only come from elves? Do we do we ever see anything other than? Oh, that's a good question. Because maybe it's not humans, but it's only elves that can become werefoxes. And that kind of, again, it's a further uh, differentiation. It looks like it's all elves, anyway. Which I quite like, again, because elves on Eldraine, it's like, well, you've already got everything else fey going on. Like, what makes the elves interesting? They're like, okay, well, that, that is actually quite an interesting well, yeah, I mean, swing the, on it. Yeah, they've definitely... They yeah. retrod the elves, they retrod werewolves, but they retrod them together and actually convert them. And you know what? In, in I've, I've turned myself around. But why, but again, why just kill, kill them? I don't, and do you know what? Do you know why? It's because the werewolf archetype if it even has an archetype i'm still not even i have a werewolf deck i'm still not convinced it's no. a fucking drive it's flippy stuff in some fashion uh, but... i suppose they've already gone look <coughs> wolves and werewolves we're going to consider to basically be the same thing all the mechanics going to work with wolves and werewolves the same way they do like serpents octopus lolith and all that kind yeah, of shit. yeah yeah sea creature could they could they do like an in the moment uh what's the word when you re do a card text um, or you would change the oracle on it yeah what if they say that all they could call a it rata. werefox a rata thank you mm. they could say look all, these are all werefoxes for the purposes of the game werefoxes are werewolves could they yeah. do that I mean does there come a time in the future where they go canines get plus one plus one and in brackets they go canines include foxes wolves you know, werewolves werewolves werefoxes. dogs hounds and then you could do the same thing if rodents get plus one plus one in brackets, rodents include rabbits, mice, rats, without having to do a massive long... Like, because you could also do undead get plus one, plus one. Undead includes skeletons, zombies. Like, it's, it would be a massive overhaul. Yeah. But I don't think it's any less than, you know, changing all of the Phyrexians to Phyrexian, for example. Yes, I agree. So, I mean... So, it's interesting. I'm just a little... I think, lots again, of depth. it's a missed opportunity. There's lots of one. depth, and I feel like the depth would have been really heightened by just having, of all the sets, to not have the five side stories. It's interesting that they put so much, seem to put so much more effort into putting the story into the cards. And I don't know if that's deliberate because they knew they were going to do less story, or if it's just a happy happenstance that we didn't get a lot of story and the cards are actually really evocative so it doesn't feel like we're missing out too much. Yeah, very true. So I'm not sure yet. We'll see when we get to Ixan if they do the same thing again. They probably won't. Every set's got a different handling of it. Um, Satyrs being a bigger thing as I well. I was going to ask you, Gruff Triplets. Yeah, I'm at Changle Span Lookout, Lookout as well. They look a bit more feral than the ones that we see in Theros. They look less... Um... Do, do you Hang on, do you think? Oh, I don't agree with that. 
I mean, I feel like they look more bestial. I feel oh, like sorry, that's they what They look more bestial. humanoid. Yeah, they look more humanoid. Because they're wearing, they're wearing like armor and clothes and things. Because the ones on Theros are deliberately meant to be sure, revelers. They're, yeah, then they, well, that's yeah, but that's what I mean. So they feel less chaotic, but they feel more. They feel less humanoid. Okay. Yes. I guess is what I mean. Uh, the, yeah, the, it, it feels very much like They've got bigger horns. Bigger horns. The the ears are slightly different as well. Like I don't know, something about them feels more. It feels very much not like we're on Theros. So I don't mind the fact there are satyrs. I, yeah, I think satyrs are a bit of a weird include. I, I will say. I understand. I understand. Um, otters, um, elusive otter, otter. And yeah, two otters. wizards apprentice. Uh, no, uh, no familiar. frolicking familiar. Frolicking apprentice. Yeah, frolicking familiar is fantastic. Otter wizard. So the otters are wizard. Yeah. What 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 otter nonsense? <laughs> God, you're cutting all of these out, aren't you? No, I'm going to leave them in. I'm just refusing to laugh at them. <laughs> I, I'm not a pun man. Well, I've got a whole list of them <laughs> about to come up, buddy. Uh, yeah, I mean, now we're literally just saying cards that we like. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 kind of what the point of the set is, right? Yeah. Oh, the point of the episode is to say well, cards. sort of. I guess we <laughs> we've gone through our big themes. Now it's just like, oh, and this card, and yeah, this card. But that's kind of like, yeah. I've got because I've got a few puns that are similar. Like Asinine tactics, where I didn't realize it for the first few time, first few times of looking at the, the donkey, it's turning into the don- donkey, kind of like Pinocchio, a little bit like Pinocchio, but a little bit like Pinocchio. Um, tough cookie. <laughs> for, I've literally just got for fuck's sake. That's all I've got is a note for it. Of course, they had to eventually do a tough cookie, and it's 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 a fucking golem that that can that can get bigger. It's also a food because it's, it's the biscuit. It's the gingerbread man, but bigger. You know, we get three different gingerbread men in this one. You get the ginger brute, the tough cookie, and then the Sir ginger. Cool, good. If, it would have been also interesting to see them fighting against the other sweets, so the noble sweets against the horror sweets. Yeah, because they're definitely they they are against the other sweets. You well, see yeah, the tough kid, Mills Mealender, isn't it, or something? Yeah. Sir ginger's called like the Mealender, which is again quite like what quite happened cool. in Sweet Tooth. I know. We'll never know. We'll never know. We'll never fucking know. Although there was um, is it in the commander sets? You get the chef card, the chef character. Uh, you get the yeah, you get the you get the uh, the gingerbread man. Yeah, yeah. So is it is it him? I, g- I don't know. I mean, is he part of it? Uh, is he is he I the mad scientist? Because his so, card does make golems, right? Yes. And and food, so maybe I would love. They've done the they did the little paper cut out puppet show trailers for Eldraine, mm. which showed kind of little snippets of fairy tale. They did the anime Willem Rowan like. Story trailer after Which the actually set came portrays out. most of the story. Yeah, <laughs> I would love it if they kind of over the next month they were just like, oh yeah, we're gonna roll all these stories out, but in like in different storytelling. That would ways. be so cool. It would be good. I don't, they're, not little, they're not it, gonna, but yeah, little story notes. So yeah, that'd be quite, 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 quite cool. Um, what other ones did I have? Charming scoundrel. Oh yeah. So I was like, it's fair to have a foil to charming prince, and it does a similar thing. It has three different effects, but it's in red. But who's it supposed to be? What, what are they representing? Is it just because that's that for me is a Melvin card because that's very much a well we did charming prince and we did three abilities and 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 one of them was draw or one of them was scry and one was flicker and stuff and they went hey let's do another version of it but in red it's like cool but what's the what's the character? I mean is it another Robin Hood? I mean I don't think it is because we had what's the robber of the rich robber of the rich yeah very cool card very cool card but again at that point you're just kind of doing the same thing it's alas so is it supposed to be it's definitely not supposed to be little red riding hood she looks more like a pirate she very much looks like this could have just been a pirate in Ixalan yeah and it's one of those few cards that I look at and go I get what you're trying to. I get what you're doing from a mechanical point of view but from a flavour point of view it actually doesn't really really work I mean another another card in a similar vein that's I'm pra- this is a praise and a sort of like huh which I like why is this in the set is discerning financier um, yeah don't really know what this character or who this character is it looks like it could have been like a sheriff of Nottingham type character but it's oh, definitely true. not but it's, it's not it's sheriff of Nottingham's yeah. in the financier yeah, but you know true. he looks like the sheriff of Nottingham in a lot of those things Wayne Reynolds artwork Friend of the podcast, Wayne Reynolds. Right, yeah, it's actually a lot softer than his normal ones because it's and it's, it's also not just a, zo- a, a goblin dashing at someone with this an axe is in their far. Hands. If you if you follow Wayne on a lot of his socials, he posts up things where he just lo- he does his saint series. So he's going through all the different saints of like you know Catholic and Christian law, <laughs> right? <laughs> like some okay. of the ones that are a bit more even like Saint Peter and all that kind but of stuff. But he draws them as like battle mages. Okay, so he does like armor and things and all that's this kind of stuff. A bit blasphemous, them. but that seems pretty fucking rad. I actually, mean, it sounds very Wayne Reynolds, it. and this fits more into that kind of thing where he's doing very sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for. Like bespoke clothing and like mm. kind of intricate sort of jewelry and stuff, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it doesn't. I know what you mean. It doesn't feel like it. Why is it? It, in this it set? doesn't feel like it belongs in the set. Mm. Yeah. Um, this is a more of a wider question before we. I guess we get to. I get to a bit of kawaii because there are some cute fuck artworks in this set. <laughs> um, the roles. 
how do you feel about this random little mechanic that snuck into the set? The rolls? Yeah. The monster roll, the cursed roll, mm. sorcerer roll. I mean, the fact that you did the rolls and then kind of looked at me confused. I don't mean like sweet rolls. Oh, it's funny because there are rolls and rolls in the set. That's... There are rolls and rolls in the set. Um, I mean... Oh, I... The, uh, sorry. R-O-L-E. Yes, R-O-L-E. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean like pastries. <laughs> See was, what I mean? <laughs> there was a real stopgap there where my brain was like, I don't, is it dice rolling? Um, no, yes, uh, I like them. The thing, I, the thing I don't like about them is it just feels, because they don't, aren't representing like there isn't an actual card. Like, it's like, um, imagine if battles weren't represented as a card and instead were represented as a token. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels to me everywhere. Because I haven't got the physical thing in my hand that I can look at. And I think that the rolls themselves even go like upside down or something. They look really well, weird. The it's, way it's, that... because it's so they can save money on printing. Yeah, so you've well, got... shocking. Yeah, um, but it's it's just backgrounds. But it's backgrounds that you can yeah. curse other people with. I don't. Again, I don't dislike it. And I like this idea that in fa- in a, in fairy tales, everyone has to do. You know, you have to have your protagonist, your antagonist. You've got to have your knight figure. You've got to have like, and and it works. You know, because it did even that in the story of where you had the fish out of water, Kellen, who's like supposed to be the guy who's eventually to become the hero, and then you have the the mentor to the side who's stronger and everything, but kind of needs a bit of grounding from the apprentice. Mm. And then you've got the big enemy. You know, and I get it, and it it kind of works ish, but if it doesn't feel like it's in the set one enough for me to understand, kind of. Or for me to feel like it fits into the flavour of the set. And then because it's got so much extra rules text added onto it, it makes every card that does it no longer feel like it's succinct. Because again, like once once you've played the set a bit, and I guess this happens this will happen more if I if I had a chance to play more limited, like once you start to feel what the cards do as you play them, the flavour of the of, of, of the cards might work better. Mm-hmm. But just reading them, they feel clunky and a little bit op- a, a little bit opaque to me. Like the, 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 there isn't a transparency to the flavour here. It feels like it's really clunky. And again, that might be just a matter of I'm reading them rather than playing with them. But there isn't a single one that I'm like, oh yeah, cool, that kind of works. You know, mm. it just feels like, again, I know why they did it, because they needed to add in these extra, um, for bargain, they needed there to be extra tokens, for the enchantment uh, theme, they needed to be more enchantments in play, and it kind of worked to fit on both, so I get it, so I, get it. I, can, I can tell the mechanical reasoning for it, but then I feel like it undermines the flavour reason for it, which, you know, seems to be a theme across the board with this set, because there's so many, so many heavy themes and heavy... Um, um, story based cards that the ones that don't fit or don't don't have that same kind of flow do do clunk a lot harder yeah i get what you mean i do i do um it's tough isn't it i th- i think they're good because what i like about it is that say if you take one like the monster one or the cursed one for example or i mean actually any of them is the fact that a lot of these fairy tales characters are very rarely what they seem unlike a lot of sort of modern storytelling where it's like you know your hero has to be the squeaky clean hero and all this Mm -hmm. kind of stuff actually a lot of older fairy tales their mechanics and their the way they told stories were often a little bit subversive the you know things aren't always what they seem sort of ideas all like heroes come from uh unlikely places right so being able to call your fucking i don't know Frexian obliterator and then suddenly bestowing it as a hero <laughs> or you know whatever else yeah it's kind of interesting it's nice it, I it like is it. but i also don't th- i mean yeah i don't know i think it's that, that, that 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 feels like flavor dissonance to me but that's it's, fine i, th- okay. I well, no, what i think it is is that whereas backgrounds are you as a player making a choice about i want to turn this legendary creature that has um you know be this commander with a background mm. or whatever from the lord the fucking lord of the rings um Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. Baldur's Gate, is that you as a player are making a choice as to how you want this character to function slash be seen like the the actual. Right, whereas the roles being the roles are a bit them. more meta, but it's right. also a bit more meta, right? It's sure. a bit more like this is a game mechanic that I'm doing this thing, right? So you are not in control of it. Okay, so. yeah, no, I get it, I get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hugely against it. it just feels I just have listed as meh or yeah, and I think it's <laughs> meh or yeah, and it feels more meh than yeah to me. Again, I. There is so much of this set that I think translates better when you play it. But, um, here's a here's a question. Go on. Bramble Familiar. Yes. Elemental Raccoon, which is probably in your kawaii list. Yeah, it is my kawaii list. Fetch Quest, which is the name of its adventure yeah. thing. Now, yes, it's a pun. I'm not going to have a go at it for being a pun. But it is a term that was at least popularised by fantasy RPG video games. Mm-hmm. Slash, okay, maybe some tabletop stuff as well. Is that not maybe pushing it a little bit trying to say because it's almost like it's a feedback loop right how many of these mechanics and these things in like the fantasy rpg set essentially 
are informed by other types of media in which those things are represented. Because effect, it's not like, do you know what I mean? It's not it's like self or self self referencing. It's self referencing. That it, it's not self referencing though. It's referencing like a whole other meme culture version of fantasy things. I mean, Eldraine is. We said this about the story as well. It's it is very fetch questing. I mean, the whole point of yeah, the set is... Yeah, but we use that term because yeah. we played fucking Witcher or Zelda or whatever and we've gone and I see what you mean, yeah, because the idea... But for them... But the thing is, we don't live in a world where there are actual fetch quests. Neither do they. Yeah, but no, they do. <laughs> they live in a world of fetch quests. Oh, we yeah. don't. So our only reference for fetch quests is because we don't do them ourselves. I mean, I could consider going down to Tesco's and buying, like, a filter for my Brita water thing. A fetch quest. Bougie. Yeah, you know, of course. I've had flex there. Uh, it's just literally right behind you. It's the first thing I could think of when I was looking. Like we don't refer to them in our in our day to day as fetch quests, but obviously within a fantasy circumstance we do. And then this is a fantasy circumstance. So in world, I would imagine like they literally go, "Hey, go to these five courts on a quest and go and fetch, fetch something." something yeah, you know, so I get it. And also, I think it's a greater problem when it comes to the adventures because all of the spell sides of it, you know, the instant the sorcery sides of it, are all a little. They're a little sweet. As a card, I don't think you'd have steam clean, you know, or hair raising, mm. and it's on a rabbit card. Mm. Also, rabbits and hares are different, mm. you know. So are we saying all rabbits are hares because we, we differentiated rats and mice? Um, and then also expensive taste on the decadent dragon because the idea is that, you know, he would eat things and eat treasure, and that, that's expensive. So oh, he's got expensive taste. I quite taste. like that. But, I mean, as in, so for me... Like, that's kind of the, like, like, have for dinner on the Devouring Sugar Mall, you know? Like, there is, I think there's a, po- a, a, a deliberate tongue-in-cheek aspect on, on the adventures anyway, and I think they just couldn't help themselves. They're like, we've got to put Fetch Quest on, 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 a, on a card somewhere. Because I guess, what makes this different to Dungeons & Dragons, when Dungeons & Dragons, I know, yes, is specifically a thing that Wizards also made, but they, they did, like, you know, a, a long rest. Because those are mechanics in the game of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, but then these are terminologies within the within the mechanics of a world that would be all about fetch quests and fairy tales. It's like, like well, no, do you know what? Do you once know what? upon you, a time, you've convinced me. Once you've convinced upon a time, me. you know, happily ever after, and then the end. I think all all cards that work because for, for again the framework of the set kind of alludes to that anyway. I th- I think I think you've you've convinced me there. I think that's uh, a, rare, a rare win for Nathan. I don't know if they're that rare, are they? True. I, I tend to get my way very often. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, should we talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, let's move on to some kawaii. Um, food coma. Yes. There are bumble goats. Bumble goats. Bumble, bumble sheep. Uh, yeah, was it? Food coma and charming. When food coma enters battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until food coma leaves the battlefield. Create a food token. It's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, Busy is... as a bumble sheep. Fairy expression. <laughs> meaning asleep. Bumble sheep. Oh, it's so Busy cute. as a bumble sheep. Yeah. Busy as a bee. It's, do you know what? It's quite, the flavour text in this yeah. is very good. It's I mean, set. they could have. the best thing they could have done is they could have somehow made the pun that did about being busy as a bee and then counting sheep to sleep. But I feel like that's 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 very... Oh, God. That's busy, a lot. Busy as an elf counting bumble sheep? Yeah, it's, oh, a, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. Much, it's a yeah. lot. No, we'll leave it to the professional writers. How about that? Wow, okay. Um, Art, the artwork, by the way, by Iris Compiette is fucking awesome. Yes, for not, I mean, that's the, the the main reason I um I bring it up. There's, what's the other one that's really quay that I really like? Protective Parents? Because it's the two parents and the little kid in the in between has a little fox fox hoodie thing on. Not that I have, you know, own multiple of those. Um, Matt Stewart. I think just the idea of having protective parents is quite cute as well because it makes the it's, it makes sense within this world of where you know you would be looking after. I mean, not that most people wouldn't, um, but I don't feel like you can put protective parents in Innistrad and not make it really grim, horrible. In this, it feels a bit more like, oh, okay, yeah. It's like, almost like the power of love and adventure. Yeah. Whereas in, in, uh, in it Australia, it's like, please like, protect your children. Oh, God, yeah. they're all going to die. <laughs> so we can't lose the fifth one. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that fucking frog hypnotised it to drown in a swamp. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I forgot about hypnotoid. Uh, and then, yeah, I just had um, cutesy animals. We've got otters, elemental snakes, you know, the frolicking familiar, as you said. Like, yeah. this, this set's very, very cute. Very it nice. It's very, ple- it's eye bleach, you know. It's pleasing on the eyes. Um, and then we've also got some other, other. I mean, I'm now in just firmly into artwork territory. Uh, we've got another Dominic Mayer, Shatter the Oath. Yeah. Really, really cool artwork. Gives really me a lot cool. of, it's the Lance, Bramble Lance or something was in the last one. It was the, um, oh, I can't remember. It was one of the Black Black Knights. Um, and it was the, 
storybook treatment, the um, alternate yeah. artwork, and it's very similar to this, and they both look really, 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 I say dashing. Um, they look really striking. They look dashing. Um, and the other artwork that I've got that I really, really like was the Tempest Heart by Aldo Dominguez, where it's not a male heart by the looks of it, but the thunder and stuff going on around its head behind gives it Right, heart, heart as in deer. Heart as in deer, yes. Yeah. yes. I was so. like, how can you tell the difference between a male and... <laughs> what? What? Well, hearts tend to be a little bigger. But yeah, the idea of all of the thunder and the lightning in the background, the tempest in the background, kind yeah. of giving him that crown. Well, they've really, really they've really lent like because obviously elk were a big part of the last set of Eldraine, right? Mm. Uh, well, I mean, the Kenrith was quite literally one, well, and, quite... Then, and then Oko. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but they've all, they have lent into it in this one. So you have there's a couple of archons in this set. Archons just tend to be everywhere. Man. Yeah, we need to look into this because archons are an interesting one. So you have archon of the wild rose is one, and then there's another. There's like a spell card that is actually it's not Archon's Glory. Yeah, which isn't depicting Archon of the Wild Rose. No, it's a different Archon. But they are both riding winged um deer, winged elk. Yeah. Right? Um so yeah, the curse of Red Tooth Keep could only be broken by a mystical rose that blooms in moonlight. <laughs> uh Chris Rahn's Archon of the Wild Rose might be my art of the set. If it weren't for Ooh. things like Ego Drain, uh by Valera Lutfolina. It's I mean Ego Drain is just the one, you know, is the, what's it? Thought. Th- uh, yeah, that's the, du- du- the duress it's of the, the set. It's the duress of the set. Yeah. I think if to say Thoughtseize puts the calibre too high. Maybe. It's the duress of the set, and it's just, it's fucking excellent. Can we also just have a side note? Discard artworks, discard card artworks in general are phenomenal. Uh, I th- well, cause Inquisition I think of Kozilek has the Eldrazi going through the mouth. Yeah. Pulling out. Duress itself has the little dude kind of like crawling along his own head. Do you, do you know why I think it is? And this is going to be very wanky. I think it's because anything to do with, like, Demir mind magic speaks to a very existential part of the imagination because it's to do with the abstract thought. But also abstract thought, if you try and, like, um, physicalise it, mm. has to do with, like, the brain, the eyes, the eye window to the soul, all mm. that kind of jazz. And so any depiction of it is going to be very dreamlike, very kind of horrifying, but in an... So it feels a little bit like a lobotomy as well. Yeah, right? like in a nightmarish way, yeah. which I think humans in general, that sparks a part of our brain that is just like, wow, that's like a real abyssal sort of, you know, leap. Mm. So that's why I think they tend to be quite good. True, true. Uh, another one from Dominic Mayer, Hopeless Nightmare. Ugh. Just phenomenal. Yeah. Again, another one one black drop. <laughs> yeah. Again, it, again, it's working with this idea of like, and and the, the the nightmare pouring out of the um, the eyes as well. The, Their the, eyes the, with little spider legs. Why is <laughs> oh it? God, what is it? Why aren't there more? And again, this is just a random side note. Now I've, th- I've thought about it. Ashok being in the set, cool, fine, whatever. Being in the story, cool, fine, whatever. We weren't really happy about it in either direction. There are so many cards that they could have been on. Yeah. And they're not. And they're not. Similar to like, we got really annoyed when it was just randomly Tamio's mind something or whatever when we were looking at um, Ma- Master of Machine? March of Machines. Or it was like, stop just throwing Tamio on random cards to make her feel like in the set. Put her in cards where she feels like she should be in the card to make it feel like the set. Right. Um, whereas, yeah, there's there's, there's there's definitely lacking Ashiot presence when they, they could be more in it. Again, you just feel like a footnote. You feel like a footnote of the set in the same way you're a footnote of the story. Have more actual relevance so I can care about your character. Ugh. Do you want to know? I've got two two flavor texts, which I think are my for a set full of excellent flavor texts. These are the ones that I think actually are funniest. Okay, go on. This is it's the best thing ever when you want to, when you go up to something and say, "Hey, do you want to hear the funniest thing ever?" And it's just, just never do <laughs> yeah, that. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's a it's a golden rule of stand up comedy that you should never start a story with. So I had a funny thing happen to me. So yeah, no, you should just never do that. Don't don't don't, don't tell. Show archive dragon. Right. Yeah. 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 You- Yes, fantastic. Four blue blue for a dragon wizard. Love a dragon wizard. Flying war two when it's a battlefield scry two. So the artwork by Tyler Wal- uh, Walpole depicts a dragon sat on a horde of books and they are reading a few it's of distinguished them. Distinguished dragon. <laughs> the flavour text, presumably from the dragon's own voice, says, Fascinating. It says here that dragons cannot read. <laughs> that's there's a joke, right? That's fantastic. There's, there's a joke that's uh, two muffins in an oven. One muffin turns to the other one and says, "Oh, it's hot in here." The other muffin says, "Fuck me, it's a it's talking a muffin." muffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Uh, so that is very fucking funny. Yeah. Also, to me. the idea of the fact that a dragon and this is getting weirdly meta. Because dragons must struggle to speak, right? But the word fascinating is actually a really difficult word to... to is you need to- like you lips need... and teeth. And yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So for a dragon to be able to say the word fascinating is, for me, gives actually more story scope well, also, than a I lot love, of other things. Do. I mean, like, we often talk about how different um, 
races or or whatever of creature, right? Or different, you know, like dragons or trolls or whatever else on different planes. They often fall into similar types of roles and whatever. And mm. even in this episode, we've spoken about how elves and satyrs seem to be treated differently on different planes, mm. which is part of the massive fun of magic. There are some um, creatures where they seem to be, like the, obse- the exception is always the thing that proves the rule. Like goblins, for example... The, the goblins on Arcadia are the super smart species, mm. but that's the weird thing, which proves the rule that goblins are always dumb. The same with the ogres on Anaki, right? Mm-hmm. Dragons tend to be this kind of very broad spectrum where you have like feral dragons from like Tarkir and that. Right. But even then they have some level they of They have some intelligence and sentient. Well, it's very rare you don't have sentient dragons. Yeah, but right, so they're the more feral ones, right? Yeah. But then you go all the way to things like Ravnica, where the most in, like, in, like um, intelligent being on the, the plane. Actual wizards, can, they can, uh, yeah, they have classes and intelligence yeah. and they can take up jobs and roles and they... Because I guess one thing they might not... Because I guess the thing about dragons is always that they're really old, so obviously their knowledge is, 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 is big. Knowledge is big, God, I'm struggling. I no, knowledge is big. Knowledge is big. Um, I guess the the difficulty is because they're magical, they can then tend to be able to like manipulate things as well. Because they're smart enough to have sentience, they can communicate, whether it be t- telepathically or, as we've seen here, like some of them can actually speak. Yeah. Now, that's a big thing for an animal. and I get Because like, they are sp- distinctively not a humanoid, right? They are yeah, distinctly yeah. an animal. And then, you, as you say... As you proven see, by the Capenna dragon folk... Yeah, exactly, who are a bit more like Viashino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you get a little bit of that again in Baldur's Gate of where you have the dragon kin who are much mm. more like just regular dudes but in lizard skin mm. as opposed to the dragons who are a bit more like animalistic. And I think dragons are, yeah, it's, you're right, and it's, it, gets, it gets muddied more and more now that we start straying into these the the humanoid versions of yeah. dragons. So at that point, maybe we need to start differentiating like cats. Are, well, Leonin are cats regardless. Oh no, but, we've already yeah, done a podcast. Yeah, no, yeah, no. But it's kind of straying towards that now, of where because you've got such a, um, a scope, but you've got the scope not just in between the humanoid and the and the more animalistic, but the animalistic ones also have a massive scope as well. Yeah. The but the thing that fascinates me so much about the dragon card in this set, the blue one, which we just speaking about, I forget the name. Already. Archive dragon. Thank you. Is the fact that usually on these planes people understand they're like like no one on Ravnica would go oh what, what do you mean a dragon's really intelligent they know who Mithras right. is whereas in this one the dragons are intelligent but everyone else people thinks that they yeah, everyone else well, thinks they're dumb because we don't see many of them right and if anything they seem to fulfil that role of being reclusive yeah like they're not overtly present within the society or anything like they feel like they would be a scourge they feel like something that if you saw a dragon you'd lose your shit similar to like Lord of the Rings kind of levels you know so I feel like that's probably why, and it's just interesting that we've happened to find the Archive Dragon, who's clearly just gone and taken over an entire library. Mm-hmm. And I guess just mo- reading through the books, it's quite interesting. I mean, yeah, I think it, it says a lot. Yeah, it says a lot about the world without having to say as much as, uh, a, 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 well, words. Good. My, uh, my other, <laughs> <Last one. laughs> other favourite flavour text, which is also a pun, is Gallant Pie Wilder. For a start, Gallant Pie Wielder. <laughs> Gallant Pie Wielder. A dwarf knight that has like a chef's hat. It's a knight. Helmet. He's been knighted. Yeah. I love Holding it. two pies. So again, this is from the food fight scene. Uh, first strike, uh, dwarf knight for two and a white. Celebration, which is one of the new mechanics. Uh, Gallant Pie Wielder has double strike as long as it has two, as long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your controller's turn. So I'm guessing like food tokens or whatever. Mm-hmm. Time for your just desserts, red cap scum. And it's just like the whole obviously just time for your just desserts is a pun in itself, but it is the it is the phrase which it's almost like transcended pun because it is just its own idiom now. Your just desserts are a thing, right? Yeah. But it's the fact that in this context he's throwing dessert pies and that's how he's a knight. That's what he does. Yeah, the it's idea, the whole thing. The idea is first strike because he's lobbed a pie at your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Like, is, is it the pie hitting you that's the first strike or the fact you're now incapacitated with pie that you then gets the first hit in? Uh, works both ways. It works both ways. The fact that he screams "red cap scum" at the yeah. end is just <laughs> also like, really that's, good. that's chef's kiss. That's Red cap great. scum. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. So yeah, those. I mean, and again, this set is. But also, so pie wielder yeah. knight being a chef peasant. Yeah, he's just a dwarf knight. So the butcher, the butcher is a peasant, but the pie wielder is a knight. Yeah. I've poor rats, man. They dwarf get, dwarf so, culture venerates its food makers I, and rat culture. I would pay money to go back to Old Drain and that the, the rats have taken over. You know, like the humans are subservient to their rat their rat overlords, and the ratters are no are like are the, the so the knights have faded into obscurity, and it's the ratters that are the most uh, prolific. You know, most important members of society. Mm. Um, what was the other one that I saw? That was a bear. Oh, it was 
it was the guy who's riding a bear. There it is. Storm Keld Vanguard, giant warrior riding a bear, and it's an adventure side, and the adventure side is bear down. That's cool. Because he's bearing down on you. I think but then the bear is also coming yeah, down. Yeah, it's very, like, very that's good. funny. I think it's we scary saw, as fuck. Imagine we saw having a giant. that the Knights of Gerenbrig are bear riders. Yeah. They don't really play with that very often. No. I mean, I feel like uh, there's not enough space for it anyway. And I think we saw a lot of, enough of it last set. Of ra- people ran, ra- riding random shit. Well, didn't we do this in an episode once where we talked about how... Um, well, we spoke about the Dominarian Knights of Herbal. Yeah, there's always random people ri- riding random shit. And I think we wanted to look at the most ridiculous mounts. Oh, no, we things, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mounts, but I think we were talking mounts. about how the Panther Panther Warriors and Dominaria also have humans amongst their ranks that yeah. ride anthropomorphic panthers. Well, we get, we're straying back into the Cat Leonin thing here. Let's not, <laughs> let's not do this. Um, yeah, interesting. There's a couple of, there are a couple of cards which I think are actually... Very like traditionally flavorfully interesting. If we're like, I know last time we did a bigger breakdown on like the individual fairy tales slash legends that go into these cards. One of my favorite Arthurian legends, and I did say they'd cut back on the Arthurian legend, but this is one where they lent into it. One of my favorite ones is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, which is one of the more famous poems. It recently got turned into a very good film starring Dev Patel. I'm gonna cut that if I've got that wrong. Um, and yeah, it it charts the the sort of the the quest of Sir Gawain, who starts life as one of the knights of the round table that's actually a bit of a little shit which to be fair a lot of them do yeah, I mean. <laughs> and then he gets challenged in the poem by a now we say it's the green knight but and based it off of nature in more modern tellings because we also we conflate it with the green knight of a lot of nature um religions like paganism or whatever else it's actually in the original 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 there's de- as to whether that's the thing or whether the green knight is he's literally a knight who is green because green was the colour of evil in those uh, tales whatever in this one it's Mosswort Dread Knight who takes the role of the green knight mm. so in the poem Sir Gawain gets challenged to a duel by the green knight on Christmas day uh, Sir Gawain cuts off the green knight's head the green knight doesn't die instead picks up their head and says find me in a year's time if you can do the same and I will repay in kind so it's sort of like haha I tricked you now I get to like cut you back and on the quest to find the chapel of the Green Knight in the poem, Sir Gawain has to learn about uh, like virtues of valour and chastity and all this kind of thing. Anyway, Mosswood Green, uh, Dread Knight is a one and a green, which is very reasonable for a 3-2 human knight. And it's got an adventure, black adventure, Dread Whispers. You draw a card and lose one life. And then its main ability is Trample. When Mosswood, uh, Mosswood Dread Knight dies, you may cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. So I don't think it's... Full on into this tale of the Green Knight, but definitely what's going on here is that the Mosswood Dread Knight is seemingly dead when it dies, mm. but then you can kickstart an adventure, much like how when the Green Knight supposedly dies when Gwen cuts off his head, or mm. Garwin as the film decides to call him, I don't know why. It actually starts an adventure in which Sir Gawain does lose a lot of himself. Like, he straight up dies at one point and then comes back to life. And then also gains knowledge and humility. So it's the you draw a card and lose one light of Dread Whispers. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah, I think it's real good. That's really good, yeah. Also, the artwork... That, that's that's the Ryan kind of thing that's sick. That's the, some, one of those things that's going to go over most people's heads. I'm not gonna... I think so. I think the Green Knight is is um, enough of a, a zeitgeisty thing. But, like, yeah, obviously the you have to be interested mm. in Arthurian Legend. It's not a... Um, Black Knight from Monty Python levels of scope. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Um, also, interestingly, um, if we look through all of the history of magic, how many oofs do you think there have been in the game? Oh, by virtue of me asking that question, I think it's going to be a low number. Ten? Hmm. Seventeen. Oh, okay. And there are two of... Th- so, if considering that you, we look back at Eventide and L- Lorne was the last time we had a lot of them. We had Dusk Urchins in Shadowmoor and we had um, Kitchen Finks, Gildaban and Aerioofs um, mm. in uh, Eventide, I mm-hmm. believe. Uh, all of them came in Shadowmoor. We didn't get any oofs in um, Lorwyn or uh, Morningside. And there are technically three in the Cell Drain set. One of them in the Commander, two in the regular set. Troublemaker, Oof um, and Toadstool Admirer. Very different take on them. They don't look like the cute little Nils Ham, little kids in random, like, onesies kind of thing There's... I suppose they don't look I mean they look more like uh, they look more like Rumpel... oof yeah stuff. they feel more like uh, Rumpelstiltskin as a yeah, character yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing and for that over hairy kind of aspect they kind of look a little bit like the monkeys from Ixalan oh yeah or the goblins I suppose from Ixalan which <laughs> yeah, look yeah, more I like monkeys mean. everyone exactly when you said that everyone just went yeah yeah the goblins yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're both really really cute really cool artworks uh, Jesper Ising um, um, did the Troublemaker Oof Julia Metzger did the Toadstool Admirer, and Iris Compier did the Knickknack of all three of them. Really cool. They look a little bit like trolls. Yes, and they, that's, I really like that. 
Um, it's another representation of Earth that's a very weird um, creature type that we didn't haven't really seen much of. They did a load of a rattering. Like we had a Finthorn Brownie from years ago that's been turned into an Earth. The Pick Knight, which has been turned into an Earth. Like I would like to see more of them. Um, I feel like it only can be in these sets, and they kind of it's quite nice to have just random like F, like you know thrown in there. Um, and then Troublemaker Earth having the flavor text heavy as the head that wears the vase. Yeah, that's, that's a, that 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 is the fetch quest yeah. swing of where stop putting stop putting Stormzy lyrics in, <laughs> into magic cards. Okay, fucking stop it. Heavy is the head that wears the crown is a phrase. Though. No, I know, but let's let's be honest. Where do people think? Where does that? Where do their minds go when they hear that? Well, do you know? Do you know where my mind goes? This isn't me trying to be contrarian. There is the film that have departed. Okay, right. Yeah. Jack Nicholson has a line where. In a very tense scene, he like he goes heavy as the hair that wears the crown. Yeah, sort fair of enough. Thing. Okay, yeah, 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 I guess it is a little bit more outside of the. I mean, that's my own bias then. Fair I mean, I, well, I, 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 my, I bi- my bias is a fucking American crime film. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Well. Based off a Hong Kong crime film. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of lots of good stuffs. Lots of really good stuffs. Again, visually, the set's fantastic. I think it. I think it. From what I can tell, as someone who's played a lot of limited in the past. Looking at the set, it looks like from a limited point of view, it's, it play really, really well. Lots of little intricacies. Mm. You get to play again. You get to play with like rats and mice and stuff, which yeah. might not be for everyone, but I quite but like. It's kind of nice. I like it's low that. to the ground. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Quite literally, yeah. And I like that compared to some of the other stuff that we've had recently. Going to the Lost Caverns of Ixalan is going to feel more grandiose. Oh, Shimmy, there's going to there's gonna be ancient priestesses riding yeah. it's a, gods. It's a Dyson sphere, apparently. On the, so Ixalan's yeah. fucking weird enough as it is. It turns out it's a hollow and you've got even more of it on the yeah, inside. the very first time we ever saw promo for it, like the original set, it was like, is that a pirate of Raska fighting vampires and And dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck is this? And it goes, hey, there's, there, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> there's twice as much as there's twice as much real estate as you thought there was. Yeah, I'm well looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, really it's interesting. I also think it's really funny to have a, set, a plane that's the Dyson Sphere to be also one of the most nautically focused sets we've had in a long time. So mm. I always feel like, what well, doesn't all the water just fall through into the... the the, where, how does the gravity work? No, but like I tell you what, in a lot of pirate media, so I've just watched the live action One Piece. Yes, I've been. I'm on episode. I watched three episodes last night. Very actually. good. Yeah, it's a, and it's, it's weirdly for a quite a grim story, and also the anime is like a billion episodes long. And I know, oh, well, it's like, yeah, it's literally over a thousand. Like which is we absurd. we we get it, One Piece people. If you have got bought into the Netflix, look, I'm a Cowboy Bebop fan. I understand the yeah. differences between live action and the cartoon. I get it. But it's one of the few ones that actually works quite well. One Piece works very well, and also it's very feel good as well. It but is. with all the nautical piratey stuff, to make it interesting, they often do do weird things with the typography. I mean, the whole thing about One Piece is that there's two hemispheres which are separated by one yeah. landmass going around the world, and then there's a vertical one called the Grand Line, which is just this arbitrarily like dangerous part of the world. Yeah, so yeah, it's like it's it's kind of I like it's, I liken it to the Caribbean of where it's a it's a bunch of area that is covered with with islands. I guess back in the day wasn't fully chartered. You could probably hide in any number of coves, and I guess it's just a band, kind of like Saturn's rings, right? Yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's just a band of of random little islands and stuff. Yeah. Where obviously that's the most affluent part of the world. So I, I think that's kind of where they're taking it. The, I mean, again, I do, I don't know enough about Mesoamerican. Uh, religions and ancient cultures that might be something that's in there so hold my hands up to that one I mean it's very Journey to the Centre of the Earth which always has dinosaurs it's very (laughs) I don't know why they always do it it's like oh it never advanced and evolved it's like why it's like because it wasn't exposed to what, what was the outside exposed to Space. I don't know. <laughs> that made evolution happen. Like, why well, wouldn't it happen at the same well, pace on the inside? I mean, we're now just well, talking about. Kevin's well, I guess they don't one. get meteors and stuff, right? Well, they so. also. It's like the Mariana Trench, where it's so deep, True. things had to like grow so big to survive. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Cool. All right. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we should probably just, wrap up. Just, this. just to cap off, there are two tokens. There are two yes. tokens I'm very excited about. <clears throat> the one I'm less excited about, but the one where I think actually that's very cool. Last time when they did food tokens, they did everything looked very sort of luscious and like. Over the top, like cakes and spirally bananas and big hog heads and all that kind of stuff. This time they've done food tokens, but they've kept it a bit more low to the ground, to use that phrase again. One I was like, oh, that's a nice little nod, is there's a food token depicting a breakfast. Yeah. And it's got like a croissant, which is, again, I think last time we spoke about this, or last time we spoke about food, maybe on our menu episode, like Eldraine is like weirdly good at confectionery. Yes. Despite having only very basic sort of like food things. I mean, I guess when you don't have impending disaster, I mean, because the Frexians, as far as as we're aware, is Eldraine's first real like mega threat mm. well, like plain wind threat mm. um so they don't again it's much easier to be affluent when you don't have an existential crisis every fucking yeah. 
week <laughs> again. R.I.P. in a thread. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, they're, yeah, so like, they're like lucky a, enough to get actual just normal bread. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's like a croissant and like bread and all this kind of stuff. Um, but there is also a giant egg that, on closer inspection, you can see that the shell of the egg is golden mirrored. So it's mm. a golden egg that nice. they're just using as their dippy egg, which is very nice. Also, question: Irvin Rodriguez art quickly. Yeah. So obviously we've done the the menu episode. Does the presence of tomatoes mean that it must have Mediterranean climates? Yeah, well, it's got it's it. got icy ones. Yeah. Well, I mean that's by the magic though. We don't actually see any hot areas, right? Well, there could be lots of food on lots of different planes that only exist because of the presence of magic. So it's like oh, someone, that's so true. So someone's gone. Oh, this plant provides these weird berries yeah. when we keep it under heat. No, the thing about it actually, yeah, like devil fr- devil fruit. There's an idea, like right, and obviously. Talk is going to be about One Piece, but having that idea of like enchanted f- food, they didn't go into it as hard this time. The food things felt more no, in the background. Again, a bit like more. apples were just sort of there. Elena Dan- Dana did the area apple, by the mm. way. Um, the other token I'm thinking of is uh, artwork by Vincent Christians. The 3 3 Beast token. Oh, they actually get a new beast token. Yeah, fantastic. What, what opened the oh, box? yeah, stunning. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, stunning. Yeah. That feels, does that not feel like a secret lair token to you? Yeah. Like, it, feel, it reminds me a lot of the forest artwork that Magali Villeneuve did. Yeah. And it's I, I think it takes a lot of, I could be wrong. This is just me now just throwing my idea into the hat. There's lots of, like, medieval illustrations. It reminds me of a tapestry you'd find yeah, in, like, yeah, a yeah. church or in an old manor yeah, yeah, yeah. house or something So, like you know, that. it's all, like, you know, some representation of an Arthurian legend or, like, the Jabberwock often has yeah. that kind of thing. And it's, yeah, it's it's uh, it's like a... I mean, it's taken an amalgamation from a lot of things, but I, I guess you could call it like a big wolf thing with, like, human hands and feet. Mm. It's very cool. It's very cool. And it is going to be my beast token moving forwards. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick. Um, Maybe the best token I think I've seen in a very long it, time. It was very striking. When I saw that, I thought, I was like, cool, all right, chill out. <laughs> Calm down. I got, like, one token in my entire box that was worth anything, and it was that one. Mm. Yeah. So my only... My last point to finish it off um, is looking at Agatha, the card... Um, I don't understand right. how why she's so hot and still a cannibal. Also, well, yeah, hot, hot stuff. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> so activated. I like abil- the pointed teeth, baby. <laughs> well, activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. Yeah, it's, it's a clunky one. And then four red, green other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and hasten till end of turn. All it seems like she's doing is the better of a cook that she gets, the easier it is for the, the creatures around her to be able to activate their abilities. And then she also has an ability that just makes them stronger. Is she not just cooking food for folks? At what point? Because we never see her in the story actually eating anyone. No. Is, is Kellen, are Kellen and Ruby just assholes? Do they just kill the best chef in, 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 in El Drain? Because none of this is negative. None of this shows her cannibalizing, eating anything, anyone. All it shows is her being a good time, yeah. benefiting other people, giving benefits to other people. None of it's showing that she's eating anything. I don't believe that she's a bad gal. I believe that all of the other sisters, even though they're like, oh, she's a bit weird, I feel like they just didn't get her. I feel like Kellen didn't get her. You know, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know, ma'am. Eber, even Eberin was a twat, so she yeah, deserved it. Yeah, it doesn't even... None of it's relevant. It doesn't None even... Of, nothing sacrifices, no, nothing gets killed. Biggest flavour fail in the... In, not only because it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that she cannibalises and eats people, because we got baked into a pie in the last set and that was perfect flavour. Yeah. But also, it just makes Kellen and Ruby seem even more like twats for killing her. <laughs> Because like her card doesn't also it doesn't have any relevance or interaction with her soul cauldron, which yes that does have more of a it eats people aspect to it, but her card doesn't. It's just interesting because it makes it just seem like she's a really cool chef that can make you, it makes you 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 stronger and easier to activate your abilities. The stronger she is, the better she feeds you up. You know? See, it's interesting. So like on her actual card, obviously yeah, you know, make jokes about like she's a she's a lovely looking lady. Um, but she's you know Buxom. she's she's mm. clearly clearly evil. She's got glowy eyes. She's got big claw hands and like you know pointy teeth or whatever. Does she or, have claw hands? Well, no, she's got very very claw like nails. nails. Yeah, but they're claws. She's they are pretty. claws. Which cute. are the signifiers? I'm out, not saying town. I'm not saying people who have those things are inherently evil. I'm saying the signifiers. <laughs> are and then but then you know she looks relatively human esque in Agatha's Soul Cauldron mm. as well. But then in the Martin Artella, uh, I actually can't remember the card name. But there's the one where you see Kellen pushing her into the cauldron. Yeah, yeah. She Love looks like vampiric. Like they've literally just gone. She she's is getting pushed evil. in. She's getting pushed in. She'd, she'd look annoying. I'd look annoyed as well. Feed the cauldron is the one. Your card just doing it. And yeah. he, 
it just, he's not even looking her in the eyes when he's doing it. it just, I'd be, I'd be like, she's not actually going, oh! I also, like, and again, this isn't a diss on her artwork because it's got to be very difficult. But again, I don't know how pushing, pushing someone who's, the cauldron is up to her waist. Yeah. Pushing her into the cauldron when she, he's smaller than she is. I don't understand how that works. Well, in the, in the story, it just says that he threw all of his weight into her. But then as you're looking at the cards... The, Agatha's Soul Cauldron shows it being much, much, much oh, larger, it is much bigger, yeah, yeah, than yeah. in the artwork for Feed the Cauldron or her artwork either. So maybe she's got multiple. Maybe that's the one that she's. she's I don't know, man. It's maybe she has more cauldron. than one cauldron. It's maybe the, she has, but it's the same cauldron. But then there's inconsistencies in the sets. The sets trash. All right, cool, good, fantastic. Um, I guess we should probably just very briefly <laughs> the basics. Holy shit, the, the, the light lands. box, the light box basics of yeah. where it's all layered effects. Those look absolutely stunning because yeah. obviously every set gets full art lands. And as we were talking with Tim Willoughby uh, recently about, it's quite nice. Initially it was like, oh, they keep doing full art lands. It's no longer special. Now it's that you can kind of choose which direction you want your full art lands to go in and none of them are too difficult. Or which is what a lot of, of us might, I count myself amongst this number. It's what a lot of us have been saying for a long time. Yeah. Yes, we get it. The Zendikar like full arts were like super special and all this kind of stuff. But also, it was the start and fall of like magic cards being like these kind of collector whale things of like like fucking Zendikar bundles and boxes were like triple the price they should have been like mm. because of these fucking lands. So no, put full arts in fucking everything. Agreed. Now make you can make every deck look pretty. Make them ubiquitous. Why not? And the effort that went into these specific lands yeah. to then just be thrown into packs as well and then be a basic is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of talk recently about um, the monsters who will you know pay for the mana vaults but proxy the basics. And it's like now you have very little excuse because there are some very pretty basics yeah. out there. Um, cool. Cool. I fucking love this. Set. Yeah, it's really, really cool set. Really, really big fan. I, big fan. I'm, I knew I was gonna, but now I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna build something. The problem with Greta is because I was gonna go down the sweet tooth route and build like a candy deck. Greta functionally would play, would either things I would do with her would play very similarly to my Wernog and Hargill deck, where mm-hmm. she enters the battlefield, creates X artifacts amount of artifact tokens to do stuff with. Yeah, also. You have to consider that this is off the back of the... Um, All of the food stuff. The Hobbits. Sam, the Sam, Hobbit, so, yeah. But then they've done a bunch a- of chefs. Anything, yeah, because yeah. Guillaume as well. Anything that Greta is doing, I think, has probably been done better before. Yeah. Greta, again, this is a... a, a again, a, I would like to play this set is as a, as a li- in limited because I think that's where they're going to shine because there's a lot of cards here that I'm like, yeah, there's just better versions of them out there in the grander, in the grander scheme of the world. So it'd be nice to play them within there in, in, in um, their... What's the word? Natural habitat. Nat- precisely. That's not what I was going for, <laughs> but that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, precisely. Um, I, I think maybe I'm going to try and find a way to utilise Moss Ward Dread Knight. The problem with Commander, isn't it, is that it, if it's not your Commander, it's very hard to build around literally one card. Yeah, because then you either need to put a load of tutors in, or you walk the entire deck to play only that, and you don't get to see it. And then by the time you see it, you forget what you had it in there for. And, oh, yeah. My perfect Golgari Commander is not a Commander. And. Please just make Underrealm Lich like right. actually a thing. Do you know? Do you know what though? You, there is an Underrealm Lich that's uh, a legendary creature, but it's in fucking blue black, and that's um, Sidisi. Yeah. No, not Sidisi. Hidden Hand. Oh, no, um, uh, fuck. Um, Tigam. Tigam. Yeah. I I had I had both of those. So initially, when I built Tassiga, I built Tassiga, and it's even listed in my tapped out as that it's Tassiga with his five drop lieutenants. Yeah. And the five drop lieutenants used to be. Um, I've forgotten his name already. Ty, 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 Ty Gam. Gam, so used to be uh, used to be uh, vindictive lich. Used to be Titania, and like there aren't as many of them. Gitrog monster. They're all like the five drops that used to kind of sit and just do interesting things with the graveyard. Yeah. So it used to be like my five drop lieutenant deck, and I've taken a few of them out since. And unfortunately, both Underrealm Lynch and uh, Tigum fell out of favour. But I do, I do look at them sometimes and go, oh. It is. I, I remember way oh. back we did an episode of cards that we think should be legendary but aren't. It was the very last, I think it was the very last one we did in person mm. before COVID hit. And yeah, Under Ramlich is still my forever legendary. Yeah. I really want them to be, I really want them to maybe next time they go to Ravnica, Under Realm Lich has become Underlord Warlock or something. Well, back in the, had this been, had the set back then been built the same way that sets are now with all of your uncommon signifiers and everything, I reckon it would, he would have been a yeah. legend. Like you look at it now and there are so many, you don't need, you didn't need any of these uncommons to have been the legend. I mean, it adds a little bit more uh, to the set, and it allows you each of the ten two color combinations to have its its um, famous character to represent the story. You know, your Ice Queen, your Pied Piper, whatever. So it kind of makes more sense like that. Like we got an actual Sleeping Beauty, you know, Neva stalked by nightmares, and that works within this set. But I think back then they would have probably ended up having it done. And it's weird because that was just before. 
that was off the back of Dragon's Maze where they complained that every every guild had a random legendary and it felt a little bit perfunctory. Sure. So Under Underrealm Lich, I think, was in Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah, so it was after... Which was, and, but it was also after 2018 Dominaria, which was one of the first modern sets where they just went, do you know what? Everyone gets a legendary yeah. because it was a set about legends. Exactly. So, so yeah. I guess they probably pulled back a little bit because they didn't want to. And then yeah. they've just gone back. And now they've just gone yeah, back to it. it was yeah. an unfortunate half himself, <laughs> so I guess. We'll just rule zero it. Just rule zero. It'll no, be fine. Well, no, I think it is kind of busted. Anyway, now we're just talking cool. about Commander. All right, anyway. Let us know what you think of this latest set. Let us know if you preferred the way they did things in original Eldraine or do you think they've gone like in the right direction here let us know if you'd love a subset because I think that's kind of where the, 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 some of the reveals they did at uh, San Diego Comic Con reveals that they're kind of doing these weird sort of like almost uh, one off sets of interesting ideas tell us if you'd like a like Horrors of the Candy Kingdom <laughs> set like Man, Sweet Tooth great. Sweet Tooth Ancillary set yeah Dusk because Dusk Morn's coming up it'd be nice to have the um well, it's as you were saying about the Witcher thing, right, from last last um, episode. There's a bit of that in Borderlands of where you go into random zombie worlds, and it's just so fun to immerse yourself within it, and it'd be really fun to immerse yourself in, yeah, in Sweet Tooth, Sweet Tooth Can- yeah. Candy Cane Land. Maybe maybe they'll do a secret layer. I'm not, I don't love secret layers as being a delivery system for mm. lore necessarily, but maybe they'll do a secret layer where they do, like, zombies as can- candy zombies, mm. or horrors, whatever. Anyway, let us know on our Twitter, at MTRSR mm. Twitter. Let us know at our X account... Oh, God. every so every time that oh, I forgot about this has happened. Every time that X is mentioned, say in a newspaper article or online or whatever, without fail, they go X brackets, formerly known as Twitter. Just call it Twitter. Well, because the thing is, it's not X dot com, is it? No, no, no. Well, no, but like, I'm not getting into slag of Elon Musk here. Not that I don't want to slag of Elon Musk, but it's not the right podcast for it. But he really fuck, <laughs> fucked it on that. Anyway, go to our X account at. MT flavoring. Uh, emails go to MT flavoring at gmail.com. My personal X account is at Andy Manface. Nathan's yours My is. My OnlyFans is at the Fox in the Moon. <laughs> Don't joke about that. <laughs> True. People, people go True. for it. I'm trying to think of a segue into the last little bit now. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Magic the Flavoring. Oh, we'll see you soon.